Nehemiah in your Bible, please. Nehemiah. Nehemiah, chapter number 8. Nehemiah, chapter number 8. Look at verse number 6. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen. Amen. With amen. lifting up their hands. Yes. And they bowed their heads. And worship the Lord yes. with their faces to the ground. Well, I'm preaching on the topic, Why Revival Tarries. And if you read this chapter, there's some ingredients yes. to how this revival came about amongst the people of God. Amen? Yes. Let me be clear and frank with you. I don't believe rot revival is a bunch of people getting saved. Now, you can say, well, you know, this or that, or so-and-so taught this or that. I don't believe that's revival. I believe that's people getting saved. Amen? Amen. God obviously stirred them up and, uh, and people got saved. It was an evangelistic effort. I believe revival is, a, uh, is a coming back from the dead, if you will, of God's people getting stirred up, getting changed, getting challenged, getting quickened, getting uh, uh, active again yes. for God. Amen. Amen. You read in Revelation, there's seven churches there, I believe it is. And God deals with the churches about getting themselves right before that He comes. Yes. To me, that's a revival service when the church of God can get Amen. right with Him. Amen. But nonetheless, i got some ingredients here. I'll give them to you quickly. And then I'll sit down and be quiet for the remainder of the services. Nehemiah chapter number 8. Let's look at verse number 1. Yes. You want the ingredients? Well, here they are. Why revival tarries? Some things maybe we're missing in this day and age that we're living in, but they had it way back yonder. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate and spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses which the Lord had commanded to Israel. Some ingredients here of this revival is that the people gathered themselves. And you got to understand, listen, I'm not, I understand this is not a local church. We all come from different walks, different things, different local churches. And I understand what, what's being said here. Amen. I believe if, if in any way possible, you ought to be a part of some type of local fellowship. Amen. Yeah, like yeah. Brother Reuben calls them, tumbleweed Christians. Rolling all over, all around, back and forth. Amen. Yeah. I happen to be a preacher at a local New Testament Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. Amen. And that's just what I do. You say, well, there's not one where I'm from. Well, start one. Amen. Amen. Bless God. Get some God inside of you and Amen. do something for the glory of Him. Amen. But they gathered Himself. So I'm not going to get off into the whole church scene because I know that then I'll lose about three quarters, or if not all of you. Amen. I'm not going to get off into the local church. You go figure that out. But you are looking at a local church man. I believe in a local a New Testament church. Anyways, but I have place. Nonetheless, if at anything, at the very minimum, if you're going to get the ingredients for revival, you have to have a place. The brother preached it earlier about going into your closet and shutting the door. What is that? That's a place where you and God can get along, where God can speak your heart, where the Lord can deal with you, where God can convict you, where God can stir you, where God can shake you up, where God can cleanse you and get you right before yeah. you grow. Yeah. You ought to have a place, yeah. but we don't have a place anymore, amen? We got a space yeah. on the internet, amen? Oh. So, uh, it's already been hit uh, hard enough, but oh. what I'm saying is, you yeah. ought to have somewhere, a some place where you can gather, and, and if you can gather with the saints, so be it. If there's no saints around you, so be it also. Amen? But what I'm saying is that they gather themselves together. Yeah. There's a good thing in having accountability uh, one amongst each other. Yeah. There's a good thing in being amongst uh, one another, where we can bounce things off of each other, where iron can sharpen iron, right. where we can talk to each other and, and, and discuss biblical things and stay right with the Lord. They gather themselves Amen. together. Amen. 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 You got to have a place. Uh, one word I want you to see in there. Amen. Brother J.K. preached this a minute ago, and so I just take the liberty and do the same. I'm a practical guy. 
If the Bible says they were together, I'm just so stupid to believe that they were together. Amen, amen. amen. Now, one thing about that, they gathered themselves together as one man into the street. This whole thing of unity, listen up very closely. You, we have to gather, if we're going to gather, we got to gather ourselves together in the unity of the saints. Thanks, brother. Yes. Together. Unity. Are you together today? Or are we 100 miles apart? Amen. Yeah. I know this ain't the local church in here today. You go home, you believe whatever you want. I go home, I believe whatever I want on the hill and the backside of nowhere. Amen. That's my business. But if we're going to put the effort, if we're going to put the time, if we're going to put the finances to come to a place, to it ought to at least be together. Amen. Amen. I'm not saying you got to believe everything I believe. I'm not saying you got to uh, uh, play your instrument to my tune. I'm not saying you have to follow in my footsteps. But we ought to at least be together. Amen. 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 Good. They gathered themselves together as one man into the street. Amen. That's a, a verse right there for street preachers. Amen. They had an outdoor service in the middle of the street. Wow. Actually. There it is. Brother Ruben's uh, famous one-liner, uh, you're not going to church, so we're bringing church to you. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. Verse number one. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law. Now we're looking at some ingredients here. If we're going to have revival, there's some certain things that got to be involved in this thing. Yeah. Bless the Lord. Verse, verse number one says here that he brought the book of the law. The book. Now I'm not no major, amen. I didn't go to school to be so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but that says book. And I just believe that that's a singular book. Amen. Because it didn't say the books of the law. It said the book of the law. Amen. No amens. All right. Well, we're going to have to dig down deep and talk. All right. You say, are you one of them King James only? Absolutely I am. Thank you very much. From the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, I believe in one book. Amen. Inspired, infallible, the perfect word of God. You want to go dig in some dirt and try to figure it out and look for old scrolls that you're never going to find? Help yourself, amen. I believe in an English book that's been preserved for all generations for this preacher right here today. Amen. He brought the book. Great. Amen. Great, man. A lot of the mess we're involved in is because everybody got a different book. Oh. Turn to this page, turn to that page. Well, mine says this. Well, the word over here means this, and that word over here said this. Right. Go ahead. Amen. God's not the author of confusion. Yeah. Rupert Murdoch's a stinking author of confusion. Yeah. Some pornographer, some lesbian uh, on the NIV committee. Right. <laughs> That's called confusion, amen. Yeah. Right. What do you say? My God's book is inspired. It is perfect. It is the Word of God. Amen. It's the book. People want to question the authority. Let me go ahead and attack one of my own. Jack Scubb had an issue with this book. Jack Scubb said this book was a, uh, was the pre uh, inspiration did not translate through preservation. Amen. Jack Scubb got arrested for over there molesting these bunch of girls across uh, uh, borders and county lines. Amen. You say, well, why would you call them out from the pulpit? Because the fact of the matter is, most people that have a problem with the final authority of the Word of God got something going on. Right. Amen. I knew we really have a shouting match on that. Amen. But nonetheless, <laughs> you just keep preaching, maybe one day you'll get an hour. <laughs> Breathe in, breathe out. <laughs> this thing's barely getting off the ground. Well, Verse right. number two. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. Another ingredient that we had here is people that actually had some understanding. 
And you know why there's so many problems in most churches today? Is because the fact of the matter is a lot of them are lost. They have no understanding. That's, right. That's why they can't see the simple and clear things out of the Word of God. Right. That's why they can't figure it out. That's why they'll fight over the color of the carpet, Brother Dick. Right. That's why they want to fuss and, and, and kick and scratch and, and buck against everything that's said uh, from the pulpit and from the authority of that local assembly. Because they have no understanding. The Bible says that that natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> understanding. We got a lot of folks in our movement. They've been preaching one year. They want to get on YouTube and make some uh, 20 points about how you ought to preach. Amen. There it is. Well, I can hear a cricket fart on that one. But nonetheless, maybe they don't have the understanding. Yeah. When I first got in this thing, you know what? I had a lot to say. I'm a young whippersnapper, 20-something years old. I thought I had it all figured out. But I was slow to speak like the Bible says. Yeah. Never got on YouTube blasting men I didn't understand. Right. Never got on YouTube blasting men I didn't agree with. Never got on YouTube smoking these guys over here because they do it this way and I think it should yeah. be done this way. Preach, brother. Preach. I was slow to speak. The longer I've been in this thing, the more I've understood. The more streets I've preached down and the more streets I've walked down, i figured it out. That man's right. I was wrong way back when. Amen? Put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> but they don't have understanding. Why? Because then maybe they're not even born again. Right. Oh, my God. Most oh, likely. Maybe they've never been born again. They don't have what I have. Amen. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, right. All right, let's keep moving down. Let's look at verse number three. I better pace myself before I blow a rod in the, in the third inning. <laughs> I'm all for it, amen. amen. I'm that stupid kid on the street doing 120 miles an hour, amen. amen running red lights and stop signs. That's the kid I was, amen. I got born again, and I'm still doing the same thing, amen. amen. Went to jail as a heathen, bless God. Got saved, and I'm still going to jail, amen. Woo! Yeah, that's right. Wow. That's what the old Texas tornado used to say. Look at verse number three. And they read therein before the street that was before the water gate, ingredients for revival. Why revival terrors? From the morning until midday. You see, these people made time for what they were getting involved in. The fact of the matter is, we live in a, in a, in a generation that we're going, we're zipping, we're busy. We got this, we got to go there, we got to do that. Right. And a lot of folks aren't making time for the things of God. There it is. These people sat there in the broad daylight right in the beaming sun. They didn't even have an air conditioner in the crack shack of Atlanta down in the dirty. Right. You'll catch that later tonight. They didn't have all this mess. They didn't have the carpet. They didn't have the padded pews. They were in the middle of the street from morning until midday. Yeah. Well, and these people's morning aren't our mornings. 10 o'clock like some street preachers getting up out of bed. Amen. Yeah. Their morning was morning, amen. Morning, amen. Breathe in, breathe out. You'll be all right. They were there from morning until midday. They made time for the occasion. They made time for the Word of God. They made time to get along with God. They made time. They cleared out their schedule. Amen. That's right. Good work, bro. When's the last time you cleared your schedule? When's the last time you made time for something, for God? They made time. They're there from, uh, from the morning until midday. The Bible says before the men and women, those that could understand. And the years of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Right. We're talking here about why revival tarries. What are the ingredients? Well, there's another one. They were attentive to the word of God. They paid attention to the things that were being spoken. Right. Amen. You got to bring in Bozo the Clown in most churches to get people to pay attention. That's true. Amen. We're so hooked on Hollywood and Hollywood and the, and the boob tube, and we're all filled with animation explosions, machine guns, and going all out. 
come to church, like one preacher said, he said they go to a ball game, they're like a, uh, like a, a wild Indian. Yeah. They come to church, they're like a wooden Indian. <laughs> All right. Amen. <laughs> they were attentive to the book of the, uh, to the law. Amen. My children, we sit them down, we read the book of the law. What do we say? What, how do we say it? Repeat it back to us. Why? Because they sit in front of a television for hour after hour and they know every character. Right. But yet get in this book and they're deader than a hammer. Come on. Amen. And, and a lot of preachers are the same way. Breathe in, breathe out. Amen. We're on everything. We're on every media outlet. We're on every social gimmick and gizm and, and thing and schism on online. But yet how much attention do you put on the Word of God? Right. How much attention do you put when the Word of God is being spoken? Well, I read my Bible this morning. You read your Bible this morning? Let's do a survey in here today. What God tell you? I read the Psalms. <laughs> you mean you just read an inspired book, God's love letter to mankind, and you have no idea what He's saying? Uh, because we don't pay attention. We don't pay attention. Well, it's nice and quiet in here, so I just yeah, go ahead and take the liberty. My kids get in trouble for not paying attention. I don't care what you do with your kids. You want to let them run around like spoiled brats help yourself. My kids get in trouble for not paying attention. They put their shoes on backwards. Guess what? That's not paying attention. This day we're living in is a mess. Everybody's going and coming. Nobody's paying attention. People are not focused on the things they ought to be focused on. Right. That's how it is. You can get in the Bible, read a whole chapter, and not even know what you just read. That's right. Are you attentive to the Word of God? One thing that's going to bring revival is when God's people get attentive to the Word of God. Right. Most folks are sleeping and passed out and could care less just waiting for the meal time, amen? Right. Waiting to get out of here, go do something else. I'm ready for a little bit of something different. These people are there from morning until midday. They're all looking at the preacher. Their ears are attentive to the book of the law. Yeah. They actually have a care. They actually have a concern. They actually are focused on what's being said. That's right. Amen. Man went... Uh, uh, preacher called the deacon up and said, Hey, uh, brother so-and-so sleeping in the back. Go wake him up. The deacon said, You put him to sleep, you go wake him yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm not for a dead preacher, amen. Right. I'm not for a dead preacher. Yeah. The preacher has responsibility, yeah. but the, the congregant, the, the, the woman, the, the man, the child in the pew, has obligation also to be attentive to the Word of God. That's true. Look at verse number four. And Ezra, the scribe, stood upon the pulpit of wood, Amen. which they had made for the purpose. The pulpit of wood. Amen. I heard Brother Grant was slamming it yesterday. Bent up his ring. Amen. That's good. Our pulpit is made with three-quarter inch plywood. Bless God. You can't break that thing with a sledgehammer. Amen. That's the kind of preaching church we are. Amen. This, this thing probably wouldn't last, Brother Dick. I'm just being honest with you. That feels like it's half inch. That thing will bust. We'll get into one for next. Thank you, Brother. Since it's nice and quiet and I got an hour, this is not a pulpit for the record, amen. That's a music stand. For all the plexiglass preachers in the world today. That ain't a pulpit, bless God. Thank you very much. Amen. He stood upon it there. There's a pulpit there, amen. The Bible says it was made for the purpose. How many of you purpose today to come here to hear from God? You on purpose are here so that God can revive you, so that God can stir you, so that God can bless you. Hallelujah. How many of you are here on purpose, amen? Or you 
just here because they said you got a slot. I was coming with or without a slot to preach, and I'm a preacher, amen. amen. God bless you, brother. Bless you, I was coming, the brothers called me and said, you know what, brother, we're going down there. You know what, let's go fellowship, let's go hang out, let's go preach to these bunch of heathen. I said, well, I miss decadence, I miss Cincinnati. So guess what, everything has to shut down, we're going to Atlanta. Praise God, thank you. On purpose! You're never going to get anywhere unless you get there on purpose. Amen. They made it for the purpose. Amen. 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 You'll go somewhere. You'll get somewhere with God if you purpose. The Bible says that Daniel purposed in his heart. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He purposed in his heart. That pulpit's here on purpose. Well, the meeting's here on purpose. Brother Dick's paying the, the bill to be in this place on purpose. It's on purpose. You get help this week, it'll be on purpose. It'll be on purpose. Not going to be on accident. Look at verse number five. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. For he was above all the people. Now, I'm not going to get entirely into this. Thank you, Brother Dick, for the platform, amen. I understand what's being said. But that man said it over there. I believe that every word of God is inspired. I believe it's all God-breathed, amen. I, I'm so stupid, I'll read half of a word and get blessed by God, amen. That's how messed up I am. But he was above all the people. You understand, I'm above you right now. You understand it. And I'm all for that. Build a little, build a little altar, you know, preacher, a little, a little bit elevated, amen? Yeah. But let me make this first practical since you can't see it, amen? He was above all the people. I believe that every man that stands in this pulpit ought to be above everyone else. Amen. And understand what I'm saying. I'm talking about above reproach. Right. I'm talking with a testimony. I'm talking that no one can come up to that man and, and tell that man that you did this or you slandered so and so or you were over right. here like yeah. lying and a cussing and a cheating and a, and a running amok. Amen? Amen. Amen? I know it's quiet because you're thinking yeah, of what you right. can slam me on. Amen? You're right. <laughs> Amen? Bless God. By God's help, you ain't going to be able to slam me. But we ought to have a testimony as a preacher. Some character about us as a preacher. Amen. When the men hang around us, they ought to know. That's a preacher. Yes. And I'm not talking about some pious, holier-than-thou punk. Amen. There you go. Breathe in, breathe out. I don't sing hymns every day of the week, all day, every day. Right. Amen. The brother hung out with me last night and said, Man, I've seen all your stuff on, on the internet and I finally get to meet you. I said, Well, you probably got the short end of the deal. <laughs> I ain't that special. Right. Amen. But I try to live for God. I'm trying to, I'm trying to go all the way for God. I'm trying to finish this thing. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right. Anyways, he was above. Look at verse number five, though. For he was above all the people. Amen. Have a little testimony. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Yeah. You know something they had? They had a little reverence for the book. For the book. They yeah. had reverence. When that man of God got up in that pulpit and he started reading and he began to read out of the book of the law, the people of God, they stood up. They stood up. Amen. Brother J.K., when you were almost done preaching, I didn't stand up in the back because that, that I wanted to be dancing around and, and messing around and fiddling around. I stood up because I'm full. My cup runneth over, I'm filled up. The reverence for what's being said for the book. Yes. They stood up. Amen. I know some preachers have their folks stand up and then sit down and then they go on to read a hundred other verses and they never make them stand up again. I'm fine with all that. I didn't have you stand up today. But there ought to be some reverence inside of our heart that when a man grabs this book and he begins to read it and that word of God is, is coming forth, that we ought to have some reverence inside of us. Amen. Amen. Reverence. I'm nothing to be respected by any means. If you knew my past, amen, you, you wouldn't have any ounce of respect for me. But the book ought to be respected. I'm not up here today because I got some horn to toot or some axe to grind. But the book ought to be reverenced. The book ought to be respected. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. I'll tell you another thing about me. This is my Bible. Amen. 
This is my book. Nobody gets my Bible. Nobody thumbs through my Bible. Nobody comes over here and disrespects my Bible. You say, well, you're being a little legalistic about that. Yes, I am. Thank you very much. My kids are specifically told, you put my book on the desk this way right there every time. Amen. You don't throw this book. No. You don't mistreat this book. No. You don't disrespect this book. No. Not in front of me anyways. Amen. Amen. If you want to go and make a mess, you do whatever you want. This is my Bible. Amen. Amen. I don't get a Bible in the pew when I go to church. I bring my own Bible to church. Amen. Amen. I don't borrow a Bible from my neighbor. I got my own Bible. And I got reverence and respect for this book. Amen. They stood up. Well, let me see if I can get over here to this last portion. The Bible says in verse number 6, everybody still all right out there? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Amen. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen. 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 Lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Now, you've got to understand something. Revival is breaking out here. The people of God are getting stirred up. Something's going on here. A man of God stirring the pot. The last ingredient, and I believe is the most important, and you can correct me when it's your turn to preach, amen, that's fine. The last ingredient, and I believe the most important ingredient here, is and Ezra, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Ezra preaching this book. Is the last ingredient, I believe, and one of the most important. And that's the subject I'm going to deal with for a couple of moments. And then I'll let you out of here. You can go have your little Cracker Jack and Starbucks coffee and go hit your college campus. Amen. You didn't like the Starbucks. Amen. I drink Starbucks coffee. Sinner. <laughs> I'm not that righteous, amen. So, the Bible says, let me see if I can get this going. Uh, 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 Watch out. I tell the young boys, put some bass in your voice, boy. Yeah. Amen? amen. Walk up here talking like no good. Good. The Bible says, though, that Ezra blessed. <laughs> understand this book. Yeah, yeah. That's the job of the preacher, amen. Yeah, yeah. The brother said it earlier about practical, being practical with the message, amen. I'm for preaching all this theological stuff. I'm for preaching doctrine out of this book. Oh, but yeah. what good is all that stuff if I don't give you something to go home with so you can change your life, amen. amen. Our preacher used to preach so practical, you would go home and throw everything, break everything, mess up everything. I mean, just to go destroy your whole house, sell everything and, and, and give to the poor, and, and there you are left broke with nothing, amen. 
No more CDs, no more movies, nothing. Amen? That's, that's practical preaching. But anyways, let me get into this, and then I'll be done. <coughs> Bless the Lord. Thank you. Look at verse number 12. Give me that bullhorn. <laughs> some events. Most of my events are right here. Reprove to the face. That's what it means. Rebuke to the face. Amen. Right, yeah. I'm for the bulk. I'm for the bullpen and all that stuff. And sometimes we've got to have it. Amen. But most of our preaching is done right there to the face. People say, well, you're just mad. You're angry. You're all messed up because <clears throat> you're in his face yelling. That's what the definition of reprove is to make something known to the face. Amen. I'm not for preaching to the, to the cows. Amen. Or to Amen. the cockroaches. Amen, brother. If you're for that, help yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If you're for preaching to the cars, help yourself. Right. I'm not making it known to a Cadillac that you're never going to be a Ford. Or making it known to a Ford you're never going to be a Cadillac. Oh, that's good. I'm for making it known to a lesbian you're never going to be a man. Right. 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 To the face. So it means reprove. It's to make known to the face. John chapter 16. <coughs> and brother Dick, just wave me off when I'm done. All right, brother. You're called throwing the towel for me, amen. John chapter number 16, let's look at it, verse number 8. Yeah. John chapter 16 and verse number 8. He said, oh, the Spirit was really moving. Well, let's see what the Spirit of God does, amen. John <laughs> chapter number 16 and verse number 8. And when He has come, who's He? The Comforter. Yeah. All right? He will what? the world and tell him how loving he is and how gracious he is and how forgiving he is and how much mercy he'll have on them. No, when the Spirit of God has come, he's going to reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. That's his book. You want to know how I know a man of God is preaching with the Spirit of God? He's making known sin, judgment, and righteousness. Amen. Yeah. Sin, yeah. judgment, yeah. righteousness. Yeah. Sin, judgment, righteousness. Sin, judgment, righteousness. 
You said preacher, is that every time, all the time? Yeah. yeah. Hey, I don't know. That's what the book says. When the Spirit of God comes, it's sin, judgment, righteousness. I don't know. You want to know if I'm filled with the Spirit of God? Do I preach sin, judgment, and righteousness? Figure it out. <coughs> Go back to 2 Timothy. Second Timothy. That's in the New Testament. Second Timothy chapter number four, once again. What's that second part there? Rebuke. It says reprove, rebuke. Yeah. What does rebuke mean? To afflict for correction. Yeah. To chasten. Yeah. To chastise. Yeah. Brother preached it earlier about God chastening people. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if you ever went to school or anything or ever been chastened at all in your life. Amen. <laughs> Anybody ever been whooped? Yeah. Boy. You don't like it at first. But those that are honest will understand. Mom, you whooped me. And thank you for whooping me. Amen. Dad, you whooped me. And thank you for whooping me. Because it shaped my life in a better way. Right. Right. You say, what are you implying? We ought to whip people. Well, <laughs> that's what it takes. <laughs> And always say, Jesus never did that. Right. So I'm just saying, Jesus did do that. <laughs> Woof him. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Go to First Timothy chapter number five, verse twenty. I'm almost done. First Timothy chapter five, verse twenty. Then that sin rebuke before all. Yeah, come on. That others also may fear. Come on. Yeah. When a man of God rebukes somebody, people ought to be afraid. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. No, no, they get paid. <clears throat> Not anymore. No, no, right? We had a we had one time a young lady come up to us in Mardi Gras. She said, Man, this is scary. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it ought to be scary. Yeah. You know why? Because the rebuke brings fear on other people. Yeah. They don't want to sin. Yeah. You go ahead, you That's get involved it. in sin. Yeah. And let us call your name from the pulpit. Other people are gonna fear. Ananias Sapphira died. Yes, yeah. come on. Peter said. Carry them out, boys. Carry them out, boys. Yep. And fear came upon all the church. Because that man of God was willing to let it be known. They've been chast chastised. They messed up. They got sideways. Amen. Amen. Go to Titus chapter number one. Titus chapter one. I'll get this voice back by the time we're on the campus. Don't worry. <laughs> I know how to lower my chin and get some diaphragm. I don't want to do it because I look like an Indian on camera. <laughs> I've preached long enough. Trust me, on the campus I will have a voice. I'm just trying to look sophisticated over here. <laughs> Titus chapter number one, verse number three. But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching. Amen. Through preaching. What does manifested mean? For the scholar to make known. What are we talking about? Rebuke, reprove. To make something known to the face. To chastise, to correct. You say, well, I do that to the sinner. How about to the saint? Paul said it's commonly reported among you. He was dealing with real issues going on in the church at the present time. Right. Right. Reprove, rebuke. When's the last time you were at a church and somebody was called to the carpet? Yeah. And said you had that stupid 
outburst, you're yelling at people in the church. Say you're sorry to everybody. When's the last time? Come on. That's good. Come on. We've done it. We do it. And we will do it. Why? Because people ought to be ashamed of the fact that they'll sin against the Holy God. Amen. Exhort means to encourage. People always think exhort. Okay, now it's time to, uh, to uh, put a little powder on their butt and put their pamper off. <laughs> exhort means to encourage, yes. But it also means to advise, yes. to warn, right. to caution. Right. Yes. This is two-thirds negative. Yep. Majority vote wins today in the House. We have a negative book. We have a negative preach. I want to get back on subject. Go back to Nehemiah. Everybody all right out there? Yes, all right, let me take you to Jeremiah chapter number one first. Jeremiah chapter number one. Talking about preaching, making it known. Jeremiah chapter number one. People say, well, you cherry pick these verses. Absolutely. Call <laughs> <laughs> everyone. <laughs> Verse 7, chapter 1, Jeremiah. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Let me say this. How in the world are you going to get on the YouTube? And tell me what I should or should not say. That's right. How in the world can a man feel justified to critique another man when they're coast to coast across the country right. and say that that was not in the spirit when that person was not there in that fight yeah. on that day? Right. right there. That's it. God told Jeremiah, I will send you and I Then we can say, well, the Bible this or the Bible that. Let's look at what the Bible is for. Is that the time, brother? Got five minutes. Five minutes. I'm shutting it down. I didn't think I'd last this long. Well, I didn't, as you can tell. Say not that I'm a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Amen. My words. Didn't this book say that all scripture is profitable? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. I just want to make one point. This book is open. For us to preach. Yeah. Amen. It says here, I have set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out. That's negative. Yeah. To pull down. That's negative. There you go. And to destroy. That's negative. And to throw down. Right. There's a biblical passage for fighting. Right. <laughs> to throw down. <laughs> Chapter number 8, Nehemiah. 
So he preached. Verse number six, they worshiped. Revival begins. What do they do? Let me give you three things real quick, and I'm done. Verse number 12, and all the people went their way to eat. Yeah. Eating is biblical. Yeah. Oh. Amen. That's, That's right. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Fellowship <laughs> is biblical. Yeah. They broke bread from house to house and they eat their meat with gladness. Yes. We're going to sit at this table. Y'all sit at that table. I don't want anything to do with you. You don't want anything to do with me. We'll just stay on our own side of the fence. Yeah. Well. Amen. If that's our attitude, we got no revival. Yeah. Yeah. We ought to want a fellowship. Brother Dick ought to have to run us out of here here in a moment. Where we want to eat and break bread with one another. Yeah. Look at verse number 15. And that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities. What does revival do? It brings fellowship of the saints. It brings a publication of the word of God in the city. Amen. Verse number 17, if you're happy, tell your face about it. <laughs> <laughs> Verse number 17 at the latter portion. And there was very great gladness. Amen. 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 When we get revival, we're going to be willing to fellowship with one another. We're going to be willing to go out in the city and preach. And we're going to have gladness in our hearts. Amen. You got gladness today inside your heart. Amen. Yes. I, I didn't mean to be a dud on you today, but hopefully you got something.